Hello, ambitious friends. I'm Carolina Risotto, and today we're starting a very special series called Let's Get Ambitious. Ever since I moved to Los Angeles, I just become obsessed about the topic of ambition. I talk about that in my previous video called Why I Moved to Los Angeles. So if you want to understand a little bit about that and get some more context before watching this, I would recommend doing so. This series is going to be all about speaking to different people in different phases of success and understand a little bit their passions, their drive, and what keeps them going. So if you're going through like a bit of self-discovery right now, I think this is gonna be super useful for you. Before we move forward though, remember to click the subscribe button below so you're notified when new videos come in. There's also a cute little bell button that actually sends you notifications on your phone. <laughs> Technology, right? This episode's guest is one of my best friends here in Los Angeles, the talented TJ Geisen. He is a concept artist originally from Arizona that currently works as an illustrator at Riot Games. In case you don't know, that's one of the biggest video game companies in the world, and they're highly known for their game called League of Legends. So I'm really happy to welcome TJ. Mm. Hello. I'm Hi. so happy to have you here. Yeah, I can't wait to interview you. Cool. So could you first explain to the audience what a concept artist does? The concept artist is there to encapsulate uh, the words and vision of different parts of the creative team when going into something like a game or a movie and um, put it into imagery that the whole team can look at and get on board with a singular vision. So I really want to understand where did your first um, inspiration come from? Like where did you start falling in love with art? Yeah, I guess it, it started all the way back in elementary school. I just drew like any kid, everyone doodled back then. But um, instead of going outside and playing sports, I just stayed inside, played video games, and drew stuff. Uh, so Your it just developed element. from that. Yes, <laughs> and it's still my element. Okay. Uh, that's just who I'm meant to be. So I, I kind of became known as the art kid at school. So people would give me like quarters, you know, three bucks, whatever, their lunch money, pretty much. And I would just draw characters they wanted, or I would do pictures of themselves, which never turned out well. So you were a hit since elementary school. I wouldn't give my lunch money away to anybody. Where did it go from there? Did you keep just like doing art and did you go to art school or anything like that later on? Yeah, so I, I went into university, um, straight into university from high, or yeah, from high school. Um, went into the art program that was offered there, but it was kind of crap. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that you run into a lot with uh, college level art education. Mm -hmm. um, it can either be not so good or it can be hella expensive and then you're paying the same a lawyer does for a degree at that point. Oh, wow. Without the same sort of job security, I guess, coming out of it. Do you feel like there was some value in it at all, going to art school? Do you think like you have to go to art school in order to become like an artist in any way, or? Certainly there are good art schools out there and you can have a good experience doing it. Um, a lot of times what it comes down to is the connections you make in school mm -hmm. with other like-minded driven artists. But as far as art goes, um, there's a lot you can learn yourself, um, especially with online resources nowadays. I feel like it was kind of my bad experience at university that actually pushed me to find that direction. So did you ever graduate? How did that go? Uh, no, I went for two years and uh, started to accumulate debt. Fuck this. I dropped out. I moved out of my parents' house, started paying my own bills, and started making comics. How did you make that change? Did you have a plan? How was that? No. I, I guess I YOLO mean, yeah good for it, you it really was it was crazy thinking back about it um, but it was just I, I think that's the the state I was in to where I didn't know what I was gonna do I just need to get out of there right felt like the state I was at there I was actually kind of tearing me down versus making any progress I just knew that if I was going to be going into debt if I was going to be waking up and sacrificing sleep and energy and, and everything I at least wanted to be doing that uh, via something I was actually passionate about. I, I needed to find my own way at right. that point, which was very unusual because I was a very chill person, kind of so complacent. What was the plan? What did you do? Um, <laughs> oh man, it was it was rough for, for many years going outside of college. I mean, there was just uh, years that it took me just to kind of like get on my feet and start figuring out how to pay bills and um, manage my, my own schedule, manage my health, cook oh, all, cooking. Mm. yeah well, you know you got to choose your priorities i know and your strengths and i just choose go. grilled cheese and pasta oh that's a good choice so my ambition back then was to harness the purity and uh the the authenticity of japanese style manga 
and bring it to America and kind of be a pioneer of making that bigger and more prevalent here in, Amer in the United States. So when did you start like actually making money out of your art? Because I imagine on the side you just had like these side gigs and all to keep yourself surviving. <laughs> yeah, man. Ooh, all the restaurant jobs, all the worst stuff. Um, <laughs> what seems interesting from what you said is that basically you were living this life, let's say during your, your day job, people say, that you really didn't like. You were working at like uh, restaurants and stuff, right? Yeah. From what I know. And then that gave you motivation to actually pursue your art even more because you were so passionate about it and you had that goal yeah. of bringing that manga art to the United States. Right, tough times for sure, but I feel like that's one of those building character yeah. situations. And it definitely gives me an appreciation um, even where I'm at now. It's really easy to become jaded once you're in the industry and just be like, well, oh, this person wants this. These people aren't appreciating my magnificence. Don't these people know who I am? It's, it's really easy to kind of fall into that, even even being at some of the like top industry jobs. Um, but what keeps me kind of grounded and humble is I think about those times serving out tacos and being treated like scum, you know. Yeah. Uh, and That's not fun. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. No, no, it's not good for anyone. Um, and it, it's, you know, there's some people who are, are great at it, and I just wasn't at all. I would never got good at serving, never got good at like, you know, bringing, bringing food out. And, um, you make great margaritas. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that. There's, there's yeah. certain things that are worth working at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a good investment of your time. Okay. TJ Margarita. has made a shitload of great margaritas at our house. He's like the big star and there's always more requests and there's never enough tequila. Yeah, I so. just end up behind the bar. And then I just become yeah. the bartender. I've yeah, that. me too. I make caipirinhas, which is this Brazilian drink. But, you know, we're not going to talk about what we do in our time off. No, we're going to no, talk no. about I, I think what we do for direction. work. <laughs> let's just, let's just completely know. go this direction. Yeah, you know what? I'm ambitious about serving the best caipirinhas. I do serve pretty good ones. Anyway, getting out of topic. When do you feel like you started making money out of art? Like, how long did that take? How did you get through the times of struggle? Because I'm pretty sure there were moments where you just felt, you know, not very motivated to keep going. Yeah. So how were those moments and how did you pull through? Part of the reason why I went into like service industry jobs and the low paying stuff when I could have gone to maybe like a nice office and made a good, you know, um, earning, especially in Arizona, there's a lot of kind of office stable career jobs that you can support a family, buy a house, stuff like that. Um, the reason why I put myself through the grinder like that is because I knew that um, I just needed something to get by for the time and something that was flexible and something that I wasn't terribly committed to so I could focus on what was really important. I watched a lot of people around me and, and friends who, you know, got that kind of comfy job and everything kind of plateaued. What drove me was having a lot of examples of what I didn't want in life. Where do you think you found that drive in yourself? Is that just something that came naturally or was there some sort of external influence that got you going? When it really kicked in was when I found uh, like resources online. There was an, an interview with a, an artist named Dan Levisi. He's a badass. He's like the art industry's like Superstar. Yeah, superstar, yeah. <laughs> we all love him. Um, but it was super inspirational. Some, a point he brought up that I still keep with me nowadays is, so what happens if you follow your ambition and you fail? Are you just going to give up? And are you going to be okay living you know, that mm. other easy life? Maybe the cushy office job? Are you really going to be fulfilled when you're on, on your deathbed? Yeah. You know, laying there in your last moments and you're like, I'm glad I took the safe route. Or, you know, are you driven to keep pursuing that thing you really want to do, what can you lose? Um, so I kind of kept that with me right. all this time. I guess an ambition is also just like being, you know, knocked down several times and losing your path and then finding yourself again and just to keep going. Because I feel like if you don't keep going and it doesn't have that drive, then maybe it's not really that much of an ambition or maybe yeah. you just need to strengthen some skills in yourself to reconnect with that ambition. Yeah. For example, even like I did YouTube content for a while and then I came back to it only two years later because when I moved to LA, like so much changed in my life and mm -hmm. I thought I had a specific path and then everything changed. But then I kind of noticed that with time, I just ended up in the same place I was before in some ways. It's like my ambition was 
you know, with me this whole time, but I hadn't really found it until I went through that moment of struggle and ma it made myself pull through, if that makes sense. No, yeah, absolutely. I think it's worth it for everyone to at least give that passion a try. Make sure you're doing something that you really like on the side and that keeps you connected with your passion. Otherwise, the other things that happen in life, it can be really distracting and just take you away from the goal, which yeah. happens a lot. So yeah. it's easy to lose your way, especially because nobody's really guiding your hand after a certain point. Was there a moment that you felt like things were starting to happen? Mm -hmm. Maybe explain a little bit what were the platforms you were using in order for people to find your art sure. and hire you? It, it kind of happened during the development of uh, a board game I worked on, Dreadbound. Um, and so I did, you know, all the art and design for the most part for that game. Since it was my own, like, solo thing with a couple of friends, um, I was able to publish it online. I started putting it on my ArtStation portfolio. I definitely recommend ArtStation. Uh, that is kind of the most legit platform in which you have a lot of professionals putting up their, their best work and, and the kind of work they want to do. And that is where a lot of industry recruiters are looking. From what I'm understanding, the important things that concept artists should be doing is creating personal projects if there's no work, putting yourself out there, uh, making sure you're found by recruiters, and trust in your art, right? Yeah, I mean, one of the things you mentioned, it's essential to be putting out personal work. Uh, one way is just doing wildly your own thing, and the other way is um, essentially catering your portfolio for the type of studio you want to work for. Are you talking about style? Yes, style and content. Uh, for instance, I, I see a lot of people who are in art school or coming out of art school, and they have a portfolio that has a sketch of a naked lady, a 3D rendering of a teddy bear, a oil pastel painting of a building block, um, and then like a 3D render of an ax. Um, yeah, what's your target audience? Exactly, yeah, and Teddy bears? you know, worst case scenario is you get picked up to paint exclusively oil paintings of buildings, and, and you're more of a character person. Um, mm, so if you're doing personal work, then put stuff out there that you really want to be doing mm -hmm. in order to not end up with the, you know, a job as an artist in a department that you don't really like. You will either confuse uh, recruiters or I people looking people. to hire. Yeah, sorry. Or uh, you will get hired for something that you're you don't really want to do and in an yeah. in, in, in industry that's so passion driven you know that's the whole reason you do art right and then they're working for years to you know get themselves out of that lane mm -hmm. of that discipline they don't necessarily want to do but as yeah. long as you're trying you know I feel like that's what matters people can tell when you're trying and seeing evolution in your work that's oh yeah that also out. important so that's one thing I learned and one thing actually that stopped me from doing YouTube videos for a while is that I always wanted them to be perfect and I there's actually several videos that I recorded and I never released mm -hmm. because I was like this is not good enough and then eventually I was like you know what like I'm really critical like you are of yourself as well mm -hmm. um, and it's just at a certain point you just need to let go you know you're not gonna go anywhere if you're not sharing your stuff you know as you try and you make mistakes you're just gonna find your voice eventually don't be so hard on yourself is what I'm trying to say because oh. You're not going to be a badass right away, and if people are a badass that young, they had to make sacrifices. I mean, like, maybe they did put in the work, maybe they didn't. Maybe they're That's just true. naturally gifted. Ooh. Maybe they were given all the resources they need when they were a kid. Maybe Hashtag they were... Stormy. Oh. Max. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. You were born with so much money. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Man, can you imagine? I think her net worth is like millions at this point. Yeah. I was looking it up online. It's kind of insane. I wish you'd probably talk about her and give her more attention. Yeah, you know what? That's yes. what she needs. <laughs> no, what I have to say that I saw something funny, kind of random here. Um, there's this uh, company that does small little fancy cars for children. Yeah. And I know that Kylie was posting something. Uh -huh. And it costs like a couple thousand dollars. <sighs> and I'm like, damn, that's crazy. She already has her first car. And mm -hmm. I got my first car like seven months ago. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in a weird way, that's still relevant to what we're talking about, which is that, you know, you could sit there and look at Instagram and be like, that kid has a nicer car than me. Yeah. And I have to work right now and that kid doesn't do anything. What's the point of that? They're Are you going to spend your life being bitter about other people's yeah. gifts and this and that? No, just focus on you. That's you do true. you. Find your path. We all start and end in different places. Like, you don't even know how to walk properly and you have a car. 
That's dope. Maybe she won't learn how to walk. See? Ooh, she's that rich. And then, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And then we'll all have that on her. No shade, no, no shade. No, if no. you got money, flaunt it. Yeah, it's, it's just the point being, which we're both trying to press here, is just find your own way that's all that's all that you that do. matters don't find your own glitter it, it's it's worth you know having uh comrades and people you're competing against yeah uh maybe to drive you but not to a malicious extent that's why there are different phases of success right but one doesn't necessarily trump the other it just takes you to the next one yeah absolutely Ooh, we got deep there see now we're getting into the groove of it that's yeah. that's why i slipped that tequila into your cup now that we understand a little bit like where you came from, a couple steps you had to take in order to make money through art, mm -hmm. tell me why you decided to move to LA. I mean, things seem to be sort of working out in Arizona, like you were getting some visibility and some connections. Why did you make the move and why did you decide to do it when you did it? Being in Arizona, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, attachment to the entertainment industry. It wasn't necessarily necessary because there's a lot of remote work you can do as an artist. Even working at Riot now, we outsource a lot of our art, and that's from people who don't work on in studio. That's some some people are in China, you know, Indonesia. But it was important for me personally because I always felt out, like a fish out of water in, in Arizona, and I relished the idea of being able to work with other creative individuals. It's kind of awesome that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, people can still find your art and you can be working for these big studios. Right, That's yeah. awesome. But even so, like you wanted to be surrounded by people who had the same drive and ambitions as you did. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just getting to be with those people on a personal level, I very much enjoyed and always wanted. Um, but also on a business side, building your network. Within three months of moving to LA, I was working like legit contract stuff. So you started putting yourself a lot out there in conventions and meeting the right people. Mm -hmm. So from there, is that how like you got your freelance jobs and all that? Yeah, yeah, that's ex exactly right. You know, um, talking about presenting portfolios at conventions, San Diego Comic Con is actually where I got my first kind of landmark contract job. So that's one of the advantages in general of being like in a city that has your industry. You're just near the network and all the events of the industry are happening there. So if you want to, you know, put yourself out there and meet the best people in the industry um, that are available and they're like taking the lead for most things, that's usually like the way to go. Just go to the city where they're doing it all. Sure. It seems like what you did. I mean, given there, there's always a trade off. So whereas the industry, it seems like natural, of course, move to LA. That's where it's all happening, Not right? Not that simple. That's what we're all thinking. <laughs> no. Well, you know, rent is maybe two or three times more expensive here than yeah. maybe where you're at. So maybe it's a little more wise right now to get the ball rolling where you're at and then go from there. So what is next for you now that you, you know, you're an illustrator at Riot Games. I've been to the campus. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. When you're a new employee at Riot uh, and you're, they're, Get taking you through training, they give you these little hats from League of Legends, and actually, what the? Hell? <laughs> I thought we should have this and finish off by oh. wearing a hat what from the? League of Legends. I don't actually know how or where you got these, but I don't feel like I can wear this yet. Like I, I, I have to, you know, earn my hat. Well, what the hell, TJ? Can you at least put it on your shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> We're working up to it. So okay, you're like... working. Out. I, I'm never gonna make it there, so yeah, I'll just do this. Moment. I wanna what go with that? the groove. I've been wearing this at home, you know, just to have some fun. It's actually really comfortable. So what is next for you now that you're at Riot? Honestly, this is this is kind of my dream come true. As, as sappy as that is, it just is. I've, I've done a lot of other jobs along the way, um, which have been great landmarks, but this is the first time that I felt like I am being asked to do the things I just naturally want to do. Mm -hmm. So I am taking a moment to just kind of relish this, enjoy it. Um, I want to really lock in the way this feels right now yeah. because I don't want to become jaded or uh, lose appreciation for what I, you know, where I've come from and what I've achieved and you know, and the, you can the great finally enjoy your success, yeah. you know? Do what you really wanted to do this whole time and that you hustled for. So mm -hmm. it must be such an amazing feeling to be there and I'm extremely proud of you. Okay, so to finish off, I want to do a little game. We both have to draw each other in like a minute. I don't know <laughs> if that'll be realistic. I'm horrible at this. I am terrible at drawing. My drawing skills froze when I was eight years old. This okay. is the pinnacle. 
I'm gonna. This is what I've been working towards. This is this is it. You know, Derby this is faces. what's next. I came prepared with a folder sponsored by Vince Beggs. Thank you so much, Vince. Alrighty then. Take this craft seriously, okay? Okay, I'm gonna try to. Where you, you count it? Give me a minute and a half. Let's be fair. You're not gonna like the way you look. You should know that right away. Alrighty then. Yeah. So we're All just right. drawing each other? Yes, positive. Okay. All right. Ready? Set. Draw. I feel like I'm already failing and I just started. Oh my god, <laughs> the pressure. People are gonna be like, this? This is the guy that I hired? No, no, DJ. <laughs> oh my god. I feel, I feel like there's no Oh, we got days. <laughs> there's no coming G -G back from this. GG easy. Oh god. I'm... Oh, beard. <laughs> oh, nice stippling technique. <laughs> Beautiful. I Look forgot your that. teeth. Oh. Hone in on those happy accidents. Ooh. <laughs> So juicy. Thank you. I feel like it's too late. It's it's too bad already. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Oh fuck. Damn it. Oh. <sighs> so many more details. Oh god. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you captured the essence, I think. Should I change career paths? Instantly. You make Picasso look bad. I'll think about that one. Okay. I swear this is not how I see you. What do you think? Who won the battle? It's not a battle, that's a massacre. <laughs> True fact. TJ, thank you so much for coming. Your participation has been lovely. It's great catching up with you on another level with three cameras pointing at me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you learned some great new things. If you did, remember to like it and to subscribe. Please follow TJ on Instagram to follow his work. If you want, you can actually buy his art book online. I will put a link on the description below so you guys can see all the amazing work he does. Also, since we're just starting this ambition series, if there's a specific career path you would like for me to explore, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see the people I know here in LA I'll bring them to the show and we can talk about their journeys and hopefully learn from them. Do you feel inspired today? I really hope you do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Let's Get Ambitious.